Hey folks, welcome back. We have zoomed ahead to Saturday afternoon at this point. I am still in the weeds of this refactor for the code for how I want the player's attack system to work, but I'm in a pretty good stopping point, so I want to pause and give you all a quick run through of where I am. The player attack state is where things start to get interesting, and we'll take a quick look at what happens when we enter this state. When we enter this state, we look to make sure that we have a reference to that weapon from the item bar and some attack data that we care about from that weapon. And we'll talk about that attack data in just a moment. Once we know we have those things, we're ready to proceed with our attack. So what I do is I take the instance of that weapon scene and add it to the player's right hand so that we can see it swing. And then we perform that swing animation. I do a few other things here, like start some timers, keep track of how long we've been attacking, applying a lunge force, and then most importantly, I call the function usePrimary on the instance of my weapon. So we just saw that we're calling the usePrimary function from the player attack state, and this is where we start to instantiate the attack that we're putting out into the world. You can see that we are creating an instance from a primary attack scene. You can see that highlighted up here, and where we are loading this attack scene from is that primary attack data. Once we have an instance of this attack, we add it to the world, we use a helper function to make sure we position it in the correct direction based on where we click, and then we call finally an execute function on the instance of that attack. The last piece of the puzzle here is that attack data resource that we kept seeing in multiple places throughout that flow. The goal here in this resource is to describe as much as possible about an individual attack. So things like the name and description and base damage for something like a weapon tool tip. You saw in the weapon class itself, we were using the attack scene path to spawn an instance of the attack to put into the world. And we also saw that I was passing attack data into my animation helper functions. That was so we could use this modifier here to speed up or slow down attack animations for individual attacks that I want to feel either snappier or more cumbersome and clunky. Now with all that done, unfortunately that has not made any particularly big changes to what you see out here when I actually play the game and attack, apart from that attack speed modifier being pretty fun to play with for rapid fire melee attacks right now. So that's kind of cool. This is already feeling a bit more flexible than before, actually probably a lot more flexible. And the whole point of it was to help me easily create new attacks and easily associate those with new weapons. So. I think that's probably where I'm gonna move next, try to branch out past this particular attack that you've been seeing for years now as I've been developing Dauphin and move on to some more interesting combat concepts. 